I think probably the best way to talk about this, and what I'm going to speak about is, is warriors and warrior societies, indigenous warriors, because this is, this is important, because we're talking about a cultural perspective of that role of warrior. And the way to speak about this is to first of all acknowledge that we come from a warrior people. We have a warrior history and we have a warrior legacy. It's the word warrior that throws us off a little bit, right? It's an English word with an English definition, with the English kind of boundaries around this concept of what a warrior is. But if I was to sit and speak to a, a huge group of people from all over Turtle Island, I like to go through an exercise and say, all right, you can recognize that it is in our culture because it's in our language. With my people, when we say warrior, we say smogness. It means shield bearer. If I was speaking to Mohawk, it would be, and everybody's Mohawk here, so it's only pronunciation, what is going to get there, I believe it is. And that's um, those who have the burden uh, of peace, of carrying peace. If you speak to the Ishinaabe, it's a digital, and those are the strong hearts. If you speak to the Lakota, the Nakota, um, and the Cree, it's Akisita. If you speak to the Nichonos, it's Whitwalk. If you speak to, let's go south, the Yaki of Mexico. For them, it's, um, I believe it's the Hayakim. And then obviously over here, it's Stomish. That little exercise should remind us that it is within our language. It's not something brand new. This is not a political protest group that emerges just out of the 60s or 70s. Um, and that's, it's not something that they've spurned on after Oka. It's something that's been with us since time immemorial, thousands of generations because it is a significant part of our culture, the concept of warrior. So what do we mean by that when we say warrior? I think a lot of people kind of have their, their perception of warrior is um, constructed by the media. We tend to think of the angry young guy screaming and hollering, getting mad at a cop, camouflage, has a mask on, maybe he's carrying an AK. Um, kind of this very, very almost aggressive, violent person. Well, that's partly what warriors do, but it's not everything. And what I mean by that is the image you're seeing is a very sensationalized image, give you the impression that warriors are criminals, that they're terrorists, they're these militant extremists that are way too far away from the, the, the realities that we exist in, that these guys are on such a fringe group, they're not worth trying to listen to their message. And that's, that's, that's a technique. And if, if anybody ever follows Noam Chomsky, you know what I'm talking about when I say stop, think words. There are particularly words that scare us into thinking any more about it. And the idea like terrorism, when you hear the word terrorist, right? Well, here's the deal. Warriors aren't terrorists. When we talk about what it means to be a warrior, you start to understand there is a very significant role to be played out. And more t today than any other time, when we look at the industrial impacts of the destruction of our homelands, we understand now that there's more of a need for this role of warrior than ever before. Now, where do we get this idea of this role of warrior? We don't have to make it up. We don't have to sit here and guess what does that mean. We know right from our original instructions. Now, it doesn't matter if you're Mi'kmaq, if you're Indigena, it doesn't matter if you look at the Lakota, or all the way over here, we all have a very common concept that we have a responsibility to the land. We have a responsibility to take care of it for the next seven generations. Think about what that means, responsibility to the land. I'm not talking about private ownership. I'm not saying you, you kind of cut off a little area and put a, a fence around it and say it's yours and go ahead and throw a lawn on it. That's not responsibility. You have a responsibility to ensure that that land is handed over to the next seven generations in as good a condition as you received it, if not better. Now. From those ideas of the original instructions, we have the idea of sacred responsibility. When it comes down to the idea, idea of protecting that sacred responsibility, that becomes a role of warrior. Because we can manage something. We can manage the land in a good way. We can take care of it. We can ensure that the salmon will come back, that the buffalo will be around, that the trees will still grow. But when there is a threat that ensures a destruction of the environment and your homeland all around you, somebody needs to stand up. 
Somebody needs to be willing to put their life and liberty on the line to fulfill that sacred responsibility. And that's what I mean when I talk about warriors. It's those who are willing to stand up and fulfill their sacred responsibilities to that land in the next seven generations. If there was no threat to your homeland, if there was no threat to your parcel of Mother Earth, there'd be no reason for a warrior. The warrior would be able to relax a little bit and do his other side of the job, which is taking care of people. Right? That's social responsibility. But we live in an age right now where that threat is larger and more powerful than any time in history. So that need for the warrior has to come forth from our people. We need to be reminded of who we are and the roles we're supposed to fulfill. Residential school was a great forgetting. That's the point in time when warrior teachings were denied to us. You can't imagine a young six-year-old kid being brought into residential school and getting warrior teachings from a priest or a nun. No. They were suppressed on purpose. It is that point in time where we could say we have been disconnected from our role of warrior. We have been separated from that social and spiritual responsibility to take care of the land, to take care of the next seven generations in a good way. We have to revive that. We have to bring that back. And we have to talk about those roles that will touch on the sensitive issues, that will sometimes see people dress up in camouflage and be willing to do what needs to be done. We have 500 years of history of learning that we're not going to go to court and win a battle to suddenly recognize that colonialism has no power over our land. Colonial courts will not eradicate their own power. We have learned that the political system is designed to colonize us. It's designed to take away the very land that we're supposed to protect. It's designed for them to turn it into profit as a way of taking it away from us. We can't forget our roles, regardless of how tough that fight might look. So when we talk about warrior, that's the person we're speaking about. That person who remembers has an ancestral memory somewhere deep in their spirit, awakening that warrior spirit that's been suppressed for ages, for a lifetime, with colonial teachings of assimilation. That warrior spirit has been pushed down to be a tiny fading light, barely able to come out. But once in a while, I, mean, I don't even know what it is, once in a thousand people amongst our people, somehow find a way of rekindling that fire of that warrior spirit. They start to remember who they are and what their role is. And that's what we're talking about when we say warrior. We're talking about those who will confront a colonial empire and protect their land because they have a role that is thousands of generations old. And they know they have to uphold it for the sake of the next seven generations.